Star Fox Zero for the Wii U has finally come out. My gosh, that took forever. So many delays. I'm a huge Star Fox fan. If you guys didn't know, you probably did because I wear Star Fox shirts all the time. I've loved Star Fox for quite some time. Almost 20 years. And I've been very excited to play Star Fox Zero for a long time and I finally got my hands on it. Let's talk about it. But first, a story. Don't worry, it's a good one. When I was a kid, my favorite thing was basketball. Basketball, basketball, basketball. When I was in elementary school, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, those guys were my heroes. Basketball, all the time, played it at recess, constantly obsessed with it, and for the longest time, I asked my parents to buy me a basketball hoop. I wanted a basketball hoop in the driveway. That was my big request for like six years. And for those years, a substitute for a basketball hoop were those little suction cup hoops with the foam balls. Man. Now those were a good time. We didn't really have a lot of money, so it took a long time. My parents finally one day surprised me with a basketball hoop in my driveway. I was so excited, I played basketball every day. Every day I came home from school, basketball. Friends came over, let's play basketball guys, let's do it. Due to finances, we unfortunately had to move to an apartment, which meant that I couldn't keep my basketball hoop and I only had it for like two months. So I was naturally devastated, my parents felt bad, and to make up for it, they said, we'll buy you a Nintendo 64. And I was like, I don't care anymore, <laughs> it's, everything's fine. And because I played this game particularly often at a kiosk at my local Blockbuster, I requested Star Fox 64, which was my very first video game I ever got. So Star Fox is kind of special to me, which is why I was so excited for Star Fox Zero. It's the same rail-based game where you're in an R-Wing or some other vehicle and you're forced to propel forward and destroy as many enemies as possible and then there's a boss at the end and you have your teammates Falco, Peppy, and Slippy and special people show up like Bill and Cat, of course. Bill, is that you? I can't believe it! And it's our four heroes job to save the Lilat system from the evil Andross's grasp once again, and we got a lot of the same banter back, which is just beautiful to see. Don't go too fast, Falco. I guess I should be thankful. Ah, I'm hit. I didn't expect to have to use this. You're very lucky. <laughs> So there's a ton of nostalgia that comes with this game immediately. It's a lot of fun. It's very similar to Star Fox 64 in almost everything. In fact, in some ways, a little too similar. Many of the exact same lands are back again, and sometimes the exact same thing happens at the exact same land. For instance, in the original Star Fox 64, you could lose track of Slippy and he could get stranded on Titania. In this game, Peppy gets stranded on Titania. Certain things happen that happen exactly in the exact same way, exactly as Star Fox 64 exactly. And that was just a little disappointing to me because I do love nostalgia, but I didn't want the exact same things to happen in the same way over and over again, just like in Star Fox 64. But there are innovations this time around. One of the biggest ones is the control system, and it's turned off a lot of gamers. And I have to be honest, I do wish there were more options. It's very intuitive. There's tons of things you can do. It's a motion control control system in which you use your gamepad to aim your reticle, as well as the control sticks to aim and move your ship. Now this can get very difficult at first. It takes some getting used to. But we live in a world where everyone wants everything right now. If I don't like this right now, I'm never going to like it. I don't have patience, I can't stick with it. But I stuck with it, and I would say after about three hours of playtime, I was starting to get good at it. But that's also a nice way to say that you can get used to anything annoying if you put up with it for long enough. That's also a little bit disappointing. I do wish that the motion control element was an option you could turn on or off. They kind of act like you can by making it so you can slightly turn it off and only use it when you're aiming, but when you're aiming is when it's most annoying, and so you really can't turn it off. Nintendo could fix all of that if they just released a patch with the ability to turn the motion controls off and just have straight up control stick controls, which is old school, and so I guess in a way I feel bad because I'm saying that the one thing Nintendo tried to do differently I'm telling them to do it the old way. It's like I don't want them to do anything new or different. So I feel kind of icky, the fact that I'm saying just make it like it used to be. Because, to be honest, sometimes if it isn't broken, 
don't fix it. The control system is a little bit hard to get used to, but once you do get used to it, there's a lot of fun to be had with this game. I love the characters, Fox, Falco, Peppy, and Slippy. All of them, they're just great. Andross is a fun and entertaining villain. This series knows what it is in regards to just being silly and over the top and very B-movie sci-fi-like. And I love that aspect of this game. It still is a lot of fun to just mow down enemies and there is a really good replay value with this game. It really just comes down to some of those motion controls and some of the forced ways the game makes you do things. For instance, imperative dialogue is heard from your teammates through the gamepad speakers, not the TV. That got a little tedious because I usually turn the gamepad down and just use the TV speakers, but you can't. There's no option to change that. Also, the game will sometimes force you to look at your gamepad. It will absolutely force you to look down at your gamepad and it will zoom out from the ship on the TV and you have no real control over the camera anymore. You have to look at cockpit view in the gamepad. That got really annoying and I wish that wasn't even in this game. I learned the motion controls, I got used to them. That was something I could figure out, but that zooming out on the TV then forcing you to look down at the gamepad to your cockpit view, which is a very restricted view, that I flat out hated and I really wish that wasn't an option in this game. My least favorite new addition in regards to vehicles is the gyro wing. This thing is just broken. You can only go up and down very slowly, forward and backwards very slowly. It's a stealth mission on the Zonus level or Zonus and it's extremely difficult to operate. You can descend a little robot from a string and operate computers, which seems like it'd be fun, but it really isn't. That whole stealth mission really did not like that part of the game. But gratefully, you're not forced to use that ship too often, so it's not that big of a deal for me. Before I give my grade for this game though, I do want to examine one thing I never really talk about. This is something I don't usually do, but in this case, I have to because I love the box art for this product. So let's examine that in detail because I really dig it. So yes, I absolutely adore this box art. It's incredible. I love the artwork. I love the design. I love the fact that it's an old cardboard style box, like an old Super NES game or N64. That is my favorite part. Also, this actually does come with an extra game called Star Fox Guard, which I have not yet played. As you can see, I haven't opened it yet. It is a tower defense game, and apparently it's fun, but I haven't actually got a chance to play that yet, so I'm not actually reviewing that game. But I love this box. I absolutely adore it. It's so nice to look at. I really wish it came with an instruction manual. Nevertheless, I just wanted to include how cool that is. It looks so awesome. I, I just, I love this artwork. Overall, I had a great time playing Star Fox Zero. It is not a perfect game. It is disappointingly very similar to Star Fox 64 in regards to following the exact same patterns and very, very closely, in fact. And I kind of was disappointed by that. I was expecting a little more innovation. Unfortunately, where they did try to innovate with the motion controls doesn't always work and it does feel very clunky and you do have to play for quite some time to get used to it. And I wish Nintendo would just release a patch that allowed you to choose if you wanted to use those controls or not. Because some people really like them and some people really hate them. I'm kind of in the middle. If they just release an option to turn them on or off, that would be perfect and the problem would be solved. Overall, I am satisfied with this game. Unfortunately, it is not the great game I hoped for. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I do wanna let you know that I'm still running my promotion with audible.com. If you guys go to audible.com slash Chris, you can get a free 30-day trial in which you can download audiobooks of your choice. I love the fact that they have so many Star Wars novels on that site. Speaking of Star Wars related things like Star Fox, I love the fact that there are so many Star Wars audiobooks on this site. I've received so much great feedback from you guys in regards to all of the things they have available. A lot of people actually used it to download some school books they needed, and that was really cool to read. I love the fact that you guys are digging that promotion, and I thank Audible very much for continuing to work with me. If you go to audible.com slash Chris, like I said, you can get a free 30-day trial of their service, and there are hundreds of thousands of books and novels at your disposal. Go enjoy that. That's my gift to you guys, and thank you very much, as always, to Audible for continuing to work with my channel and sponsor my videos. You guys are the best. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, guys. I'll be back very soon with a review for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, as well as Green Room, and I want to review Ratchet and & Clank, and I want to review Keanu. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.